Number 17. Cohiba, 55 anniversario. Limited edition, 2021. No opinion. I haven't smoked it. You know, at least it was a Cohiba Siglo or something. I can give my opinion on it. Um, but this cigar in particular, no opinion. Moving on. Number 16. The Romeo y Julieta Linea de Nobis Oro. Oro. Again, this is the general cigar knockoff. Oh, no, this is the Habano. Sorry, this is the Cuban. The way they went kind of flashy, and I seen the 1875 there, I jumped to the knockoff right away. So I would like to smoke this cigar. I haven't had this cigar. So no opinion on this one either. At number 15, the La Polina Goldie Leguito, number two, fantastic cigar. I could see this top 25. This one I'm not gonna push back too much against, especially the Leguito size, which is the 38 ring gauge. Absolutely fantastic, love it. Um, Dominican uh, Nicaraguan filler, Ecuadorian binder, Ecuadorian wrapper, made in the US at the El Titan de Bronze factory, whatever that is, $23 cigar, US MSRP. It's a pricey one, so this would be like $70 cigar in Canada. But, um, yeah, I'll say, this cigar definitely belongs on the top 25 list. I'm a huge fan of the La Polina line. At number 14, the New World Dorado Robusto. I haven't had it, I ain't gonna talk smack about something I haven't had, but as far as the New World line goes, every time they come out with like the Cameroon, the, you know, they come out with a few different variations of the New World line. The New World, the original blend, is a fantastic blend. Um, they really shouldn't mess with that too much, it's, it's a great cigar. <coughs> I don't know if I'd say it's top 25, but it's a strong cigar, we're talking about the original New World. But everything that comes after that is not as good. So. I'm skeptical if this one's worthy of top 25, but I've never had it, so I can't dog on that too much. This is a fantastic cigar. The Hoya de Nicaragua Antonio 1970. I haven't had it at the Churchill, but I've had this cigar. Fantastic. Love the Hoya, the Hoya line, especially the Antonios. They're all fantastic. I would... Of the Hoya line, I would say the Atanios are definitely top 25 worthy. Like I said, I didn't have the cigars out of the batch they smoked. And cigars do vary box to box, batch to batch, crop to crop. And sometimes you get cigars that are just magic. So, I have had some bad Atanios that disappointed me. But for the most part, the Atanio line by Hoya de Nicaragua is fantastic. At number 12... The La Flor Dominicana Oro Chisel. Uh, I don't know if I like this one. I don't know if I like this in the top 25. I'm not a fan of the chisel size. Even as far as the chisels go, the Double Ahero Chisel is probably the better one out of the bunch. Um, Dominican filler binder, Nicaraguan wrapper, rolled in the Dominican at the La Flor factory. Um, they give it a 93 points at number 12. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm I've had it. It's it's not the best of the chisels. And in my opinion, I don't think any of the chisels belong in the top 25. Number 11. The E.P. Carrillo Pledge. This is the Ap Apoye, 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 A-P-O-G-E-E, -E, however you want to pronounce that. This is number 11, 93 points. $15 U.S. MSRP, Nicaraguan fillers, Ecuadorian binder, U.S. Connecticut Habano wrapper. We've smoked the cigar on the podcast in, in the prequel. The prequel won the Cigar Aficionado Cigar of the Year. Definitely deserved it when it won that. I'm going to say, even though I haven't had the size, I will go out on a limb and say this cigar definitely probably belongs on Cigar Aficionado's top 25. I have no argument with the placement of this cigar. It's the Ernesto Perez Carrillo um, pledge line is fantastic. Next up, we're getting into the top 10. The Arturo Fuente Rare Pink Vintage 1960 Series Sophisticated Hooker. Haven't had it. So I'm not going to speak out of school on this one to say whether or not it belongs in the top 10. But if you 
read Cigar Fish Down a magazine, you see who dumps a lot of money into the advertising. I'm not saying that this cigar doesn't belong on there, but I've had a lot of Arturo Fuentes that aren't the Opus X's and have a hard time justifying them as top 25 cigars. At number nine, no, number nine, this does not belong here. The Romeo y Julieta, the Dominican knockoff, or the Nicaragua knockoff in this case, because this one's Reserva Real from Nicaragua. And the Churchill size, uh, number nine spot, scored 93 points. I will say it's out of the A.J. Fernandez factory. A.J. Fernandez does make a lot of good cigars. Maybe this batch that they made was great, but I had this blue band of the... Like, I don't... Listen, I'm going to be honest. I don't buy these Romeo Julietas. Um, a lot of times people give them to me, thinking they're Cubans. And I don't have the heart to tell them they're not. Then I smoke them. They're okay at best. But um, there's no way... No way this cigar is a top 10 cigar. There's no way. This cigar is not better than the Tetuaje that's like way back there. So, I don't know. This is this this smells fishy to me. At number 8. At number 8 we have the Padron Anniversary 1964. It's a great cigar. Um, this is one they claim is Nicaraguan binder filler wrapper. Worst kept secret in the industry. It's a Mexican San Andreas wrapper around Nicaraguan binder and filler. Rolled in Nicaragua, the drone factory. Four and a quarter by 46. It's a tasty cigar. This one, US MSRP, is $11. I've never seen these for $11 US. So I don't know where that pricing's from. Um, but I'm not going to say the cigar doesn't belong in the top 25, but there's probably 25 cigars I like better than this cigar. Number seven. The My Father Libby's U 1922. Nick Rock and Carol, rolling in My Father's Cigar Factory, 94 points. It's been Cigar of the Year. It's a fantastic cigar. Scored well in, when we did it on Our Dirty Dozen for 2022. Um, don't remember where that one landed, but you got good placement. It's top 12 of the cigars we smoked, so. Yeah, I cannot argue. At number seven, the My Father Libby's U 1922 is a fantastic cigar. Alec Bradley Black Market Churchill. I will say, the Alec Bla Bradley Black Market, if you're going to smoke it, it's the Churchill or the Robusto. Those are the good sizes. The Black Market Esteli, don't even waste your time and money. Even though that made a top 25 either last year or the year before. Don't know how that happened. Because that's a not a top 25 cigar. This one, I don't know if I would say it's top 10 even of the cigars on this list. But it's a pretty fantastic and tasty cigar. Especially the Churchill size. So you're not going to get too much pushback from me on the Alec Bradley Black Market being on this list. The only pushback is I don't know if it's number 6. There's other cigars I would, this is I place above it, including that My Father Libby's used.